This is Dr. Lauren Lanham from Keene State College, continuing this lecture series addressing making sense of genomic data, gene calling, and genome annotation. This portion, in this portion of the lecture series, we're going to talk about some more background information that you need to understand this overall topic, and we're going to talk about sequence conventions and also reading frames. So let's orient ourselves in a prokaryotic genome. First of all, remember that cellular DNA in a genome is always double-stranded. So chromosomes consist of double-stranded DNA, strand 1 and strand 2. Okay, so a strand and its reverse, or uh, sorry, its anti-parallel complement as the second strand. So here I'm showing a, a representation of a prokaryotic genome, and the two circles imply the two strands that make up the double-stranded DNA molecule. So by convention, when talking about and expressing entire prokaryotic genomes, one strand will be called the plus strand, and the other will be called the minus strand. So here in red, we could imagine as the plus strand, and it will be the one that is uploaded to GenBank um, as a fast A file, and it will have all the information associated with the genome, and the file will always be expressed in the five prime to three prime direction, just like in English, we read from left to right. It's simply a determined convention, a chosen convention, so we all know what we're looking for. The blue then could be the minus strand, and its sequence will actually not be uploaded to GenBank, but you can infer it if you know the base pairing rules for DNA, and you know that DNA is anti-parallel. So we're using the terms plus and minus here, and I want to point out that um, that terminology has an entire alternative meaning that I will not get into here that refers to which um, portion of DNA is used as the template for transcription and which is not, and um, that's a legitimate use of that terminology as well, and it is very confusing, um, and you're just going to have to work to keep it straight. But here what we're talking about is the fact that one of the strands will be the plus strand, the other strand in its entirety will be the minus strand, and the plus strand will be written 5 prime to 3 prime, and it will be the sequence that you see in GenPink or in other sequence repositories. So when we look at sequence data um, on prokaryotic genomes, we're going to see it up there as FASTA files, and this is not showing a 5 prime here, but you can infer that it is there, and this sequence will be the plus strand in the prokaryotic genome. So continuing on with some background information, let's think a little bit about transcription. So up here at the top, we have a double-stranded DNA molecule, and the transcription bubble has been broken out. This figure's from Khan Academy, and we're seeing the base pairing rules play out. Transcription's occurring here, so the red is the new RNA that is being made as the template is transcribed. So this is the template strand, and the template strand of DNA in blue is always transcribed moving from 3 to 5. So that means the new RNA is made from 5 to 3. And it's made according to base pairing rules. This other strand from the point of view of gene expression is just a placeholder. Okay, So that RNA will then be the transcript or messenger RNA molecule and it will be used by the ribosome in the process of translation to choose the appropriate amino acid that makes it into the final polypeptide and therefore protein. So keep those sort of orientations in mind here. So let's talk about the term reading frame now. So the genetic code is written one codon at a time, and a codon consists of three nucleotides. So here's a DNA codon, TAC, it's used to make an RNA codon, AUG, and that RNA codon is used to choose an amino acid, which is methionine. AUG, incidentally, is also the start codon. The codon GGT encodes the messenger RNA CCA, which represents the amino acid proline, and so on. Okay, And then this is the DNA sequence that encodes this RNA codon which uh, tells the ribosome to stop translating, so it's a stop codon. So that means that we're reading the genetic message in units of three called codons. And so that means that reading occurs in frame. So if we're reading this top strand of DNA as the gene, then TAC is going to mean methionine if we're starting at this position. 
If we start at this position, then the codon would be A, C, G, right? And that would mean an entirely different amino acid. So down here, if we're translating, um, starting at the A above, then we would get, like starting at this position, we would get A, that we would get the messenger RNA, U, G, C, C, A, U, C, A, G, and so on. So we would get the amino acids cysteine, histidine, glycine, and phenylalanine instead of these amino acids. That would be the first reading frame, this would be the second reading frame, and this could be the third reading frame. If we moved one more position, we would be back to the original reading frame, just minus one codon. So there are three possible reading frames, depending on if we start at this position, or this position, or this position. So this would be frame one, two, and three and go th units of three down from there and then infer the genetic message. So there are three possible reading frames for using this sequence of DNA as a gene, but remember that DNA is double-stranded, so for this sequence there is a complementary anti-parallel DNA sequence that can also be utilized as the template, which means that in total there are six reading frames for each possible DNA sequence, and that's what this cartoon is showing over here on the right. Here are frames 1, 2, and 3, and then the next three frames. And we're seeing 1, 2, and 3 written backwards, because if we go back to this figure, and we remember that transcription always uses the template in the 3 to 5 prime orientation, we're going to use the DNA in this direction if the gene sequence is down here, but we're going to use the DNA in this direction if this top strand represents the template. And that's going to be dictated, like which strand is utilized is going to be dictated by where the promoter is located. If it's over here on this strand, or sorry, over here on this strand, or if it's over here on this strand. That will, is what will dictate um, which strand is utilized as the coding strand. So if, the, if you have a gene template and it's on the 3 to 5 prime strand, and what I've done here is written, here's a sequence of DNA, here is the start codon, and here is the stop codon, 3 prime to 5 prime. This is the template strand, so, tr so transcription is going to occur in this direction, and, it, and transcription is going to produce this messenger RNA in this orientation. Okay? Now, this strand has a complementary anti-parallel strand, as do all DNA found, all DNA molecules that can make up chromosomes. And so this will have this as its complementary and anti-parallel strand, where there's a T here, there's an A here, where there's an A here, there's a T here, where there's a C here, there's a G, and so on. This sends three prime, therefore its complement's opposite is five prime. So when we look at the complement of the DNA template, that's where we see a sequence called ATG, which is what we look for when we're looking for start codons, and TGA, which is what we look for when we're looking for stop codons. So that's different than if the gene template is on the opposite strand. Let's say the gene template is on the 5 prime to 3 prime strand. So here notice that I've flipped the direction of transcription and I've flipped the direction of translation relative to the previous figure, but I'm staying true to the real actual biology and that transcription is using the template 3 to 5 and it is making the new messenger RNA 5 to 3. Okay, so here we've got TAC, which when transcribed will make AUG, which is the start codon. And then we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing with whatever coding sequence is in here. And then we've got a stop codon ACT, which when transcribed will make the stop codon UGA, which is the signal for the ribosome to stop translation. So here is the template DNA, and it will therefore have a, a complement that will be anti-parallel. This is the complementary anti-parallel strand. Okay, and so if we look over here and we read from right to left, which is not very intuitive for English speakers, but we see our start code on ATG and a stop code on TGA. And that's just really hard for us to look at. So typically and informatically in the computer uh, algorithms that we have written and we utilize to find what are called open reading frames, which I will get to eventually, what we do is we take the reverse, we take the complement, and then we reverse it. So I've just literally taken this molecule and I've flipped it over, 
and that's what I've written down here. Now it's really easy for me to look for ATG, a start, and TGA, a stop. And so this is the reading frame that I'm considering. So each sequence of DNA, each, each section of DNA will have six possible reading frames, three on the top strand and three on the bottom strand. And so here we've got a nucleotide sequence and then three potential amino acid sequences on the top strand, three potential amino acid sequences on the bottom strand. Each depends on which position you begin calling a codon in, in this nucleotide strand. There's a really excellent reading and example on this topic at this particular website that I encourage you to have a look at and I also encourage you to try to work the example shown there um, on your own and then check what's written to see if you've gotten it right. So from the topic of reading frame we're next going to move on to the concept of what is called an open reading frame and that's the first step in searching for a gene in a sequence or in an entire genome.